Yes, special guest today is Bishop Harry Jackson of Hope Christian Church in Washington, D.C. The subject is the Hate Crimes Bill, 1592, the House bill that was just passed in the House of Representatives. And now there's a Senate version that's going through the ranks. And it's a very serious situation. And you've got some special guests with you today, Bishop Harry Jackson. Could you introduce these two lovely ladies? Great. These are my comrades in war. <laughs> and the first person is Kim Daniels. And uh, Apostle Kim is from Jacksonville, Florida. And because of her voice on the hill to some of us Christians, she sounded an alarm that motivated me to gather many, many people from around the country and in a few days, we're going to have a full-page ad pulled out in the Washington Post that says, basically, stay out of our pulpits. We've already yes. raised the money to do this with African-American pastors raising their voice. Wow. And then Cindy Jacobs, another dear friend of mine, and uh, really it's because of a prophetic word that she gave me a couple years ago that we turned our attention towards this issue. Well, not this issue, but the issue of public policy. We're sitting on the edge of Washington, D.C., not thinking really that God had us there to prophesy to the politicians. We thought we were just supposed to lead a church and minister like everybody else, but the Lord confirmed and directed us through words that she gave that we were to enter into this fight. So these are two All very right, I want to friends. talk to both of these ladies. Kim, we'll start with you first. You've written a book entitled Give It Back. And uh, first of all, tell me about th that book. What does that mean, Give It Back? Well, first of all, it's not a, a question or it's an exclamation. It's not asking the enemy to give it back. It's demanding that everything that the enemy has stolen from us, according to Proverbs 6 and 31, it says when you recognize a thief, you can make him give it back, and he has to pay us back seven times. And is that part of what's happening here? He's trying to steal from us through this uh, particular bill? Uh, I mean, it's still our freedom to be able to talk about uh, righteousness and speak against sin? And, and I, I believe that the enemy has, has has stolen some things from us, but the enemy has come in like a flood, but God is bringing his body together and he's raising the standard. Now, what is the spiritual implications of this bill that Bishop Jackson has so eloquently shared with us today? If the people of God don't get involved, should we get involved and why? Well, most definitely we should be involved because it's this, the first thing everyone needs to understand is, is this is not about sexual preference. It's about an agenda. We're not just dealing with people who want to be gay or don't want to be gay. We're dealing with an agenda mm. to shut the mouth of the church. Amen. And, and, and you have to really go all the way back to what God, where God is in this thing. You have to go back to the book of Revelations. And the Bible says, all the way back then, it says that in the times of Noah, men were marrying and giving unto marriage. That word um, marriage is gameo, and it, mean, it means same-sex marriage. So, so God does not like this. And a lot of times um, we worry about hurting other folks' feelings, but I think it's time for the church to consider what does God think about this? And our rights are, are just desperately at jeopardy because there are people in my ministry and so many other ministries that come out of homosexuality. I have a man that's a part of my ministry who's even had a sex change, who God took him in a vision to hell. Wow. And, and when he got to hell in this vision, he realized, and he's from my past, he realized I'm a man. And if I were not there um, with the freedom to preach, he came to me and um, we ministered to him and he's renounced homosexuality, though he has a, still has a body like a woman. Wow. So it's never too late in God and we need freedom of mm. speech because it is never too late. Um, I'm offended personally by them comparing my civil rights to homosexual sexuality because I can't wake up tomorrow and not be black. Uh -huh. You know, homosexuality is a choice and I, 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 did, I couldn't choose whether I was black or white. So it's important that we understand the urgency and I, I really um, want to encourage those preachers who say I don't want to be involved or, you know, that, that kind of, that's a burden on my heart right oh, yeah. now. Mm -hmm. that these preachers, that God has given them platforms, he's given them favor. And, and, and just like Esther, you know, I want to prophesy that word to, this piece, pre, to those preachers, that you've got those television stations and those things that God has given you for such a time as this. And they need to understand that even by not being involved, they will perish because even their freedom of speech is jeopardized. 
Cindy Jacobs of Generals of Intercession, a Christian people sitting there thinking, what should I do? What difference can I make? What would you say to them today? Why do they need to get involved and what do they need to do? You know, if Marcus, if we could turn back the clock of time and put prayer back in school, if we'd been in there at 62, if we'd been a voice and 67 Bible reading was taken out of school, wow. then we wouldn't even be sitting here today. Mm -hmm. But the point is the church is at a crossroads. Yes. And either we're going to be a voice where we have liberty to be a voice, or we're going to be a voice in persecution. But I tell you, mm -hmm. Marcus, we are always going to be a voice. Yes. And the point is, if we don't speak up now, and if we don't say, look, we are going to end up being the ones hated here. Wow. We are going to be the end up and be the ones that have no liberties. You know, we have been in Australia when the vineyard guys were arrested there for simply reading the Koran, not speaking against Muslims. And I, so I want to say to you right now at this juncture, this nation will go one of two ways. I mean, by 08, we're going to be going one or two ways. You know, Daniel 7.25 says, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. Wow. Right now what is happening is Satan is coming in through the courts to force us to compromise the scripture and say mm. that homosexuality is not a sin. We love homosexual people. Yes. We don't want any of them to get hurt. That's right. But the point is, Satan is a master strategist and he has come in at this point, even if the nation is grieving, to try to strip us of our rights to preach. But I want to say something and I'm going to say something prophetically right now. This is what the Lord is saying, that if they try to continue to muzzle the voice of the church, we will get into civil disobedience and we will preach anyway if we have to go to jail, if we have to go to prison. Listen, this is why this issue led by Harry and Kim and those in the black community, we white people have to follow them. Yes. They know how to do this. We've got to humble ourselves now and say, look, you, you, you point the way and we're going to stand with you. But, so but it has to be done now.